Welcome back to another episode of the Bush TV. In the previous episode, I'm heading towards a beautiful little spot right on Serpentine Creek. To get there, we have to travel over Burgoyne's East, down to the McAllister River Gorge, and head towards Cobspur Track, where we get some absolutely spectacular views, looking straight towards Lacola North, before dropping down to Serpentine Creek for the night. In this episode of the Bush TV, I head out of Cobspur Track, to the Hayfield Jamison Road, head towards Morris Road, McMillan's Track, where we then turn left on Middle Ridge Road. We take Middle Ridge Road all the way up to Mountain Ash Spur Track. From there, I hit Son of a Bitch Track, where I looked for a camp spot, but was unsuccessful. After driving an absolutely spectacular old school track, I continue on to the Knobs Track, where I find a high elevation camp for the night, before continuing down to the Jamison Valley, to spend a couple of good days in Upper Jamison Hut. Sit back guys, relax and enjoy the Bush TV. To be sure not to miss an episode of the Bush TV, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification, Click all and you'll be notified as soon as I drop a video. Okay, so I've just stopped and pulled over just to have a bit of a look at the map. I'm just about to hit the blacktop just down there. So, Cobspur track is not too bad. Like It's been graded from that camp spot I was in last night. Pretty easy going, a couple of steep sort of sections, but pretty much graded the whole way. Anyway, so I'm hitting the blacktop, Jamison LaCola Road, just down there, and looking for what's called Morris Road, which runs right down to Middle Ridge Road. And there's a couple of waypoints there I've put in on a GPS. We head up Middle Ridge Road, and we hit Mountain Ash Track, and just continue going up all the way up until the two Barclay rivers meet. Uh, I've waypointed everything on the map as well. I've checked out rooftop maps also, and I've also checked out Google Maps. So, yeah, so it's not so bad. It doesn't look too bad, like, as in time-wise, but you don't know what the track's like. So let's hit it, and let's see what happens. Let's get there. So it's not a bad little spot here, actually, uh, besides a bit of rubbish in the fire behind me, but this is an all right little spot. A little bit exposed over there, but uh, beside that, it'll be a bad lunch stop. All right, let's hit the track, hit the blacktop, and uh, yeah, I probably won't film too much more until I get down to like maybe Middle Ridge Road or something like that. So, yeah, we'll see what happens if I come across anything like bog holes and things that makes it more interesting. I'll get out with the camera, so we'll see how we go. If I don't, I'll see you in the next bit, then it's easy.
This track reminds me of what tracks used to be like back in the 90s. Not purely maintained and things like that, so this is how it was. It was sort of, this is good. I'm enjoying this drive. I really am. Uh, yeah, this is the type of tracks, you know, you don't know what you're going to come across up here, just like this behind me. It's actually a really enjoyable sort of run, this. You can come in through La Cola as well. You don't have to come up on Mount Skeen, but I think that's a pretty good run as well over Cobspur. A couple of real good day runs like as well. If you stay at La Cola Caravan Park, you can do a couple of these real good day runs, yeah? So um, worth having a look at, guys. Just check out some of my content, see where I've done and what I've done in the area. Drop a comment. Let me know if you like the tracks graded or you like a bit of a challenge. What's your cup of tea? How do you like going bush? It just amazes me how these tracks can change and what the Victorian high country has to offer. Every track's different, every area and ecosystem, and this track is a highly recommended run, whether it's from the south end or the northern end. It's highly recommended to check the weather conditions before you do come away on this type of track, as it can change overnight. Even the lads at Admiral Town can have their work cut out for them on some of these types of tracks. I'd definitely do this run again, it's actually quite fun. Like I said, you don't know what's around the corner. We're heading towards Mountain Ash Track, and then Son of a Bitch Tracks tomorrow, so that's going to be good as well. It's the type of thing I like to do. Those easy tracks are just, they get a bit boring. Like, oof, like in front of me right now, yeah? like these little rut bits. They're not that bad though. I'm just going for another one now. No locker, just cruising through it slow. So yeah, son of a bitch track. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I haven't, I've never done it. So, uh, I haven't done this one. Whoa, that's a traveler. That was a log, someone log. That was a log. Like a chopped log that someone lost off the roof rack or something. So yeah, this track's actually getting a bit interesting as well. But uh, yeah, son of a bitch is the one that I'm looking forward to. So yeah, it's fun. This is what I love. It's awesome stuff. Little story. The Victorian high country has been a passion for mine since the early 80s and a big part of my life. Going through some hardship in my life, the Victorian high country and coming away camping has actually improved my mental health in a big, big way. To connect with nature, and connect with myself to get away and enjoy those birds, the sound of the river and a crackling fire just cannot be beaten. It's been a pleasure to make content like this to bring it out to people like you. Even though there is still trolls and bullies over the YouTube platform, even as far as another content creator on this platform been harassing me for years. Yeah, like I said, you don't know what's around the corner, but I mean, nothing major yet. A couple of these types of things. Mountain ash track, this one starting to head downhill, so good sign that it's coming to the river. I might have to pull over in a minute and just have a quick gander at the GPS just to see where I am and uh, how far I've got to go. 30 seconds later, I've actually got a fair bit to go, so yeah, I'm on Mountain Ash now. It looks like a fair way, so I might just put this down and try and make up some time. It's about one o'clock. Taking about an hour from the Middle Ridge Road, where it's Morris Road, Middle Ridge Road, whatever it's called, down there on Skeen Creek. It's taking about an hour. It's a nice rut in front of me. Oh yeah, I love this track. So yeah, it's not too bad. I filmed a couple of things too, so just not an hour. And, uh, making a bit of track here. Let's put this down, guys. Right, so there's a river crossing here. Uh, I'll just let the brakes cool down a bit. I've got a bit of grease coming out of my left-hand swivel hub. Has been for a bit of a 
a while. So it starts to smoke a bit because it hits the rotor. So this track's pretty interesting, like I said. This one will be a real good one in the wet. Uh, if you don't mind a bit of pinstripes and stuff, I'd recommend that one. It's pretty, uh, pretty good. Check this out. Back there, there's a big, big bog hole in the corner. It's big. I mean, it's, it's, it's on a corner coming down a hill, so it's not like a bog hole, but you, it's chewed out. There's a little chicken track that goes around, nothing major, but the bog hole could have gone through. It was empty, no water, but I just went around and pushed, sort of pushing the time. So I'll let that cool down for a minute. Uh, I might go wash my hands or something down there, and, uh, and we'll keep going. If you're traveling solo in this type of country, make sure you've got a winch and definitely a bag of recovery gear. You just never know what's around the corner and if you do get stuck, you're on your own. Without a winch or the right recovery gear, you could be out here for quite some time, even overnight in this type of situation. I myself, as experienced as I am in the high country and that has taken years, I have learned the hard way in the past. Okay, so I did pass a waypoint and I stopped and got out onto the toilet. It was a little track that went into the left and I crossed the river, not realising that it was the Barclay River West Branch. The spot where I was meant to camp is back there, so I am on some of this track and I've just come to my track junction now. Lower Saddle Road. So I'm at the lower saddle road and the son of a bitch track right now and I don't have a camp spot. So it is now 2.20. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do at this stage. Lower saddle road. I'm looking at the son of a bitch track. Right. I'm going to push on. I'm literally going to just keep pushing on and see where we go. I don't know how hard this track is. Back there, you definitely need a winch. I used the locker in a couple of spots because it was a couple of good steps. Um, Mountain Ash was real good. Son of a bitch so far. Not as gnarly as Mountain Ash beside the steep inclines. Second low, committed, put the locker in twice. So anyway, let's keep going. And yeah, I don't know where I'm going to end up tonight. We'll see what happens. So pushing up son of a bitch track, now I'm on the lookout for a high elevation camp spot. And this time of year, I'm chasing the sun as it's non-daylight saving times. Alright guys, so I'm pushed on. I'm still on son of a bitch track. Heading towards Knobs Track, not too far off, it's pretty rough. Uh, this is a highly recommended run if anyone wants to do it. If you don't want pinstripes and things like that, don't bother. And if you haven't got a winch, don't bother. I mean, there was a couple of sections, like I said before, where locker, I locked it in and I couldn't film it because once I was committed, that was it. Uh, it's one of those situations, you come around a corner and you see it, you're like, well, I've got forward momentum, I ain't stopping. Not for nothing, so that's when you come unstuck and I'd have stopped anywhere or I would have lost the vehicle. So it's been good so far. I'm trying to find a high elevation now because I'm now on 1244 metres above sea level. Mount McDonald's just over there, I can see it. So we're on the other side of the ranges, heading down again, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Anyway, we head down, we head down, we'll see where this takes us, but I still wanted to go high elevation, so pushing 3 o'clock in the afternoon, mid-May, not a lot of daylight with it. So, I'm going to make a decision real quick, I haven't found any spots yet up there, there's a couple of little patches where I could have pulled over, but, yeah, so look, I've got a 
sort of make a decision soon, otherwise I'll be getting into a camp at night. Uh, I don't have any firewood or even yet, and I'm sort of glad I didn't put any on the roof rack, because I reckon I would have lost a lot uh, out of that track, so um, yeah, you can only take it so easy, and some spots committed, you can't take it that easy, because it's just, you can't. Anyways, put it down again guys, and we'll see where we, where we end up. Like I said, I'm on Son of a Bitch track, right near the end. Right near the knob track. That's where I'm coming up to in about, I reckon, another, maybe two k's or something like that. Maybe two clicks. So, yeah, I'll put this down. And we'll see where we end up. Because, look, I've had a massive day. I've been in the saddle since 9 o'clock. So... What's that? Nine o'clock. Six hours, I say. It's all right, but I have filmed a bit of it, so but this has been a big one. I pushed past my original spot where I was going to camp. I'm going to get out and go to the toilet. But um, anyways, it is what it is. I'm in the bush. It's good. It's This is very, very enjoyable, this track. Mount McDonald's right there. Let's see where we end up. All right, guys, I've just found a spot. It was very spontaneous. I'm really a stone's throw from Mount McDonald and probably even on Mount McDonald if I look at the map. Uh, I can see over there Mount Lovick. Uh, that's above the tree line over there. It looks awesome. So this is it tonight. It's high elevation. I think you're about, I'm about 1,400 metres or so here. It gives me a bit more daylight because I'm high elevation. So I better get set up now. It's been a massive day. Huge day on the vehicle. Huge day for me absolute ripper track i tell you again i'll say it i would highly recommend if you like old school four-wheel drive tracks and things like that that's one for you anyways i am going to set this camp up i'm limited for daylight we're pushing it but we're here so we're going to make the most of it tonight i'm going to have a steak a bit of salad nice and easy let's get it set up and we'll kick back and we enjoy this bush tv because this is absolutely I love it. I love high elevation. I love snow guns. It's going to be a cracking night. There's no wind. It's beautiful. Check this spot out. Time to get this camp set up. We're going to cut and split some wood and get a nice coal base before that sun goes down to cook up a nice good feed for the night. If you're enjoying this type of video, give it a thumbs up and drop me a comment and let me know what part of the video you like the best. And to be a part of the conversation, make sure you hit subscribe. So you might think the awning's a bit closer to fire, but I agree it is. It's about oh, a metre and a half off the fire. So I'm only really this pulled to have to dry it off because it's wet. So I don't think I'll even use it tonight. I'll uh, just dry it off, roll the swag down, and then, yeah, we're done. A lot of folks bring their own wood to go camping with. In my case, it's probably 5% of the time I would bring a bag of wood if it was bad weather. Do you bring a bag of wood, or do you prefer to get it out of the scrub? Let me know. One thing about a high elevation camp is the weather can change at any time. And any time of year in the Victorian high country, it can actually snow. I always prepare my trips for the absolute worst weather possible. If it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it's a bonus. Or sometimes it's a bonus that actually, if it does happen. I quite enjoy the elements. After setting up the camp and drawing out the awning, it's that time of day to sit back, relax around that fire, have a couple of good cold ones and enjoy it in for the night. It's been a long day, a big one, but a damn good one. I'll tell you what, guys, again, highly recommended this run. Absolutely awesome. I'll do it again any day.
fire's a little bit harder to get going tonight. I don't know why. It could be something to do with high elevation, but I wouldn't have thought so. The wood's pretty dry. Anyway, it's got it going. Taking about 40 odd minutes to get that thing sort of at the stage where it is now, in between what I've done. Everything I've just done, like seriously, I had a full tank. I fueled up in uh, Mafra. And then I've done cob spur track all of that all to this point now. I just put the jerry can in the car, which is 20 litres, and uh shy of 20 litres actually. It's about 18. Yeah, it's full, it's filled. So I'm quite happy with that. I've got half a sub tank and I've got a full main tank now with about I'd say seven to eight litres left in the jerry can. So I'm pretty happy about that to where I am right now and to what I've done today, uh, it's done well. Generally, generally that car would use about 22 litres per 100. So like from what I've pushed through today, yeah, I don't know how many Ks it's done, but like I've done a lot of low range, hours of it, hours of low range stuff. So anyway, yeah, I've had a really, really good day. Like this, I haven't finished this obviously. Tomorrow we go up the knob track there and it meets the Brox Road. So uh, I'm, a, I'm about, a, well, half a day in front of myself right now, camped here. Uh, I was meant to camp down at the Barclay River where the two branches meet. I did see it. I did get out of the car and I checked it out. The track that went into the camp spot was severely rutted out. So I didn't drive in. I thought, nah, forget it. And it was like really, real damp, really, really damp and sort of darkish in there, it was in the valley. So if I was there right now at this time, it'd be dark almost. We wouldn't be having this conversation. So anyway, we are here. I'm high elevation. It is just on 1300 meters. I just checked. It feels like it's higher, but it's not. Mount McDonald's just there. Mount Lovick is just over there. It looks awesome. I can't see it real well. The moon's up. Uh, it's a good night. There's no wind. There's a tiny breeze, but It's gonna be a real good night. I'll see if I can do a time lapse tonight with the stars You can see the camera in the background over there. I haven't started it yet I'll have a crack at it and if it doesn't work uh, So what but yeah, once this fire is gone I don't know if I'll keep the awning up the where where that awning is right now just sitting there like that. That's um it's not going to be a big fire, so I might just keep it up for, for the night. We'll see how we go. If not, I'm going to roll it up. It's I've got two pop rivets on the main frame of the awning that have popped off. So it's a bit loose on the on the end. Um, it's not a very old awning either. Like the awning I had before that one, I had since 2012. A 2x3 meter one, and it lasted a long time. This thing, like, uh, seems to have already broken one pole i've bent the little arm those pins that go in i've bent one to the hilt um i don't know it's a good awning but like it's one of those i don't think any of those are really any good to be honest i've got a 270 on the other side that xtm one uh, i've got a brand new ocam one on at home sitting in a box still that i hope is going to be a little bit better quality than obviously the XTM one. Um, we'll see what happens. I've got to fit it when I get back. So, yeah, but these these pull out awnings are a real nightmare. They bend, they carry on, they're weak, they're aluminium. It wouldn't take much for it just to get ripped off the car, to be completely honest. So, let me know what you guys are running. Are you running one of these? Are you running like a, a bushwhack one or 270? If you're not running a 270, what are you running as a main awning? Um, let me know. Drop a comment. I'm curious. After a couple of beers and a good old relax around that fire, it's time to call it for a night. Fortunately enough, that brings this video to an end. So join me in the next one when we continue the trip on the Knobs track, hit the Brooks Road for a beautiful little relaxing camp at Upper Jamison Hut where I meet up with my mate. To show your appreciation in this type of content, give it a thumbs up guys, hit subscribe, the bell notification and all, so you don't miss an episode of The Bush TV. Again guys, thanks for watching, appreciate all your comments and thumbs, 
and we'll see you in the next one.